Hi, and welcome back to my channel. If you are a new subscriber, welcome. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you a fun and quick project that I came up with. It is a lighted lich. And it's one of those things where you may even have all of these things just laying around the house without even realizing it. So I have this fun little guy with me as a little sneak peek. He is lighted up, as you can see. And uh, this lovely little detail around the bottom makes it look like he's floating across the table. So it's actually a pretty cool feature. And it's one of those things where um, I have not had much experience with dealing with liches. The last one I think I encountered was when we were playing Baldur's Gate on our PlayStation 2. Uh, however, uh, we have a lot of creepy undead scary creatures coming up in our campaign and I figured uh, this might make a good addition to it and uh, I'm excited to see how it gets used. So as always, any questions? down below and I'll do my best to answer them for you. Uh, have fun with it. Any time you come up with something different or want to take a spin off of it, by all means do it. That's the whole point of sharing these videos with you, just to kind of spark that inspiration and get you thinking about what it is that you yourself can do with a very similar item or a similar concept. So that's it. I'll stop chatting and I'll let you get to the video. Thanks always for watching. Bye! The first thing you're going to want is a skeleton that fits the pose that you have in mind for your particular project. This guy came from a bin that we got of monsters off of Amazon. I will include a link for this in the description. Now once you pick out the skeleton you like, start trimming away the base because you don't want to have the base there. It's going to cover up the light that's in the LED candle. So trim everything away carefully. Make sure you're using a nice strong sharp pair of nippers to get everything off um, when it comes to the base. and then once once the base is removed, just look around and also trim off anything else you don't want there. Um, I decided to remove the axes because I had other plans for those hands. So yeah, I removed the weapons as well. Once you get that all removed, you're going to take your hot glue gun and and get your hot glue gun warming up. And while that's warming, the next thing you want to do is you're going to just take some black paint and white glue mixed together and put a very thin coat onto the skeleton really to bring out the details. It's sort of like a wash, but it's not runny like a wash. So make sure you do that part because it helps you see where the details of the skull are and the ribs and everything like that. Once that's dry, hot glue it, now that your hot glue gun's warm and ready to go, to that Dollar Tree LED tea light. And then you're going to take the same paint mixture and dab it onto that tea light. Do not paint it fully black. You want to kind of have that blend of black and white. Next thing we're going to start working on is the dark magic feature. And again, hot glue gun, but this time I used a glitter stick. And this one I decided to go with green. They come in other colors, but for me, green kind of fit what I had conceptually. And then you're going to basically use the same technique that I discussed already in my blood and guts video. That will be linked at the end of the video. So take aquaphor, take a flat plate, something with no texture on the bottom, grease that aquaphor on in a very thin layer and make sure it's nice and smooth. Then you put the hot glue on top of the area where you have that aquaphor. And this is going to act as a barrier so it won't stick to the plate and it's going to lift off so easily you won't believe it. So these are the shapes I made. They're very organic. They're, they're very free, free flow. And when you pull them off, just make sure you do wash it with dish soap. I like to use Dawn because it cuts the grease. Um, but yeah, wash those up before you start putting them to use. And once you have everything dry and ready to go, you're going to take the same glue stick and put a dollop onto the hand where you want this magic to come from and start gluing your pieces onto the hand. And the nice thing is, is because of that glue, it blends in beautifully. Next, you're going to want some polyfill, also called batting, also called stuffing. You can find it at craft stores in a big roll. Uh, the other thing you can do is if you have an old pillow around your house, slip that sucker open and use the stuffing from that. Obviously you might want to wash it first, but you can use what's inside an old pillow too. So take that part of the batting and you're going to dip it into the mix of equal parts black paint, white glue, and water. And this is going to give this batting some color. So you want to squeeze it out as best you can. I also use a paper towel to pull off any excess moisture. And as it dries, it gets this lighter gray, smoky look to it, which I really liked the final effect of. So that's how I got the grayer color in the batting. Now what you're going to do is take the white batting that you haven't played around with and start putting it around the candle with your hot glue gun with a clear stick of hot glue. Don't use the glitter stick anymore. 
So get that all glued around. Uh, you don't have to be perfectly shoved and spaced up to each other. You want it to be light and fluffy and kind of pull the pieces away to get more of a fog smoke effect. But you do want to make sure that that batting is up near where the flame is. Now while everything's drying with that, I did make up a staff for this particular fellow and I just used a sandwich skewer for it. And take clear hot glue and wrap it carefully around a thin layer. You don't need to be super thick. And then at the top I just put a dollop of hot glue and I played around with the tip of the glue gun just to sort of give it this crystal teardrop shape and it came out pretty well. Again, key here is keep the hot glue thin. Next you're going to go to cheesecloth and just cut out a square and when you have that square cut out, peel it apart because it's probably going to be in two layers most likely. So when you have the one layer of cheesecloth, cut a slit down the center so you have a shape that looks something like this. And once you have that going, you're going to go back to that mix of black paint, hot glue, and water and dip that into it. Wring it out as best you can. Again, paper towel is fantastic for removing the excess. And then you're going to have cheesecloth that looks like this. It's been dyed with the paint. So you're going to take this and you're going to wrap it around the body of the skeleton. Zhuzh it up however you want. Um, I want it to have sort of like draping sleeves. Really it's up to you how you want to get it displayed, but this gives you an idea of starting point. The next thing you're going to do after you get the first layer of the shroud on is you're going to cut out another piece of cheesecloth, or actually use the second piece if it came in double layers. Make sure this one isn't quite as wide that it's more of a rectangular shape, but you do want to make sure you have that slit cut down the center again. This time you dip it though into a moss green paint, glue, and water mixture, but same thing. Wring it out, use the paper towel to get off that excess moisture, and then start draping that one around the other part of the shroud that you just put on. And as you can see here, I kind of tucked it underneath at one point, let it flow in the back a little bit more. And the more you play around with it, the more you're probably going to get the look that you want. But this kind of gave me the two different layers of a shroud. I wanted to have a couple different colors just for visual interest. Now, once you're sure everything is where you want it to be, you can test fit your staff or whatever it is you want to put in the other hand. I'm going with the staff. And I checked the length. I did need to trim off a little bit off the bottom because it was a little bit too long. Once you get that trimmed off, hot glue it after you've painted it. So what I did was I painted it with just a dark brown and then I took a red metallic uh, dry brush on it to give it that kind of look. And I purposely left the top clear. I kind of liked the way that looked. I didn't want to play with it too much. It gave it that crystal look. And then once the gray batting is dry, you're going to glue that on towards the bottom. Not underneath, but at the base of the candle. Uh, and that way it kind of has like this darker gray floating out underneath the white batting. And what I did was once everything was dry, I did do a black wash on the staff and also on the skeleton to bring out the details of the teeth and the sockets and everything like that. Uh, after that, I did a dry brush on the shroud as well as the skeleton, especially where the metallic features are. And at this point, it really just brought the whole look together. So that's everything for you. I hope you enjoyed it. Do what you want with this. I would love to see what you're doing. Thanks very much for watching. you how I made a actually pretty quick 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 <laughs> quick quick honey quick <laughs> yeah I'm gonna cut hair out of my mouth leech lich leech nut lick lick I don't know lich right lich